let's talk about the penguins. I've been waiting. I've been waiting. I've been waiting. I've been waiting. No, no. I've been waiting. I've been waiting. I've been waiting since the first win. Uh, winter. Damn it. No. I've been waiting for the first HBO twenty four seven to call them the Schittsburg Penguins since Alex Ovechkin called them that when he said "fuck this Schittsburg team." It's happened. Well, um, who who is this? Chris Faber at karaoke. Jesus Christ. Who's? <laughs> Whoa. That's a good joke. That's it. that's not a joke because he's very good at karaoke. He is. He but uh, listen, I love Faber and he listens. He supports us on Patreon. And I would, so I could would, you. I would marry him if he wasn't married. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, yeah. I'd probably marry him. He's got some pipes on him. Yeah. I'd, I'd swim. Whoa, I'd whoa, swim. whoa! It's a family show here. Pipe. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Oh my God, Ryan. Uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. Oh God, is wet. Get the wheels off the bus. So. A couple years ago, I, I literally broke a rash where I'm like, yeah, Sidney Crosby will, will, you know, eventually get traded to play with, 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 um, it was like three years ago. Right? Yeah. And it was still during COVID. Nathan McKinnon, you know, he wants to go to Pitts, he got it, wants to go to Colorado, he wants to win more cups. And then you're like, why would he want to do that? You got to retire, you got to wear, you got to retire the team, you got to have one jersey ever, you win all these Stanley Cups. Why does this guy need to do anything else? Yeah. And, Sidney Crosby is the most hyper-competitive athlete that maybe we've seen in our era, where you hear the famous, you hear the stories of Dolph Dager and the Stanley Cup Finals, only guy in the gym is Sid, working out, crushing yeah. weights, setting that tone. He instilled that onto Nathan McKinnon. McKinnon went with his own weird American psycho, don't eat sugar yeah. or anything white uh, mindset. But, like, you have a kid, Sid, the kid. Yeah. So damn competitive and having a banner year. We watched him play the Canucks, and the Canucks blew it against him. The most dangerous person on the ice was Sidney Crosby. Mm -hmm. Anytime he was on the ice, he was a threat, and he made the most dangerous scoring chances out of thin air. You got a guy like this that is absolutely crushing it and aging like a fine wine, like a fine Stanley Park goal line lager. Mm. And you don't insulate him to keep trying, and you keep trying, you keep trying. Our one of our favorite things to say on this show is two things can be true at the same time. Number one, Sidney Crosby is super competitive. He's still got it. He's one of the best players in in the game, and he should be playing for Stanley Cups. Kyle Dubas has one hell of a shitty order on his desk with his pal Jason to try and find prospects and picks that Jimmy Rutherford and Patrick Alvin traded away for a decade. Yep. He needs to move on from these core three. Uh, I, there was this idea in the NHL around the Sedins, you, you know, you got to retire. You can only wear one Jersey. That's the biggest thing. Yep. Honestly, they they got to move these guys and they got to start over yeah. and they need to start this rebuild because the penguins were in the hunt the penguins were hovering around wild card you know in the metro division they 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 looked like they were set to be a playoff team if yeah. they buckled down as soon as dubas did the right thing trading jake gunsel like the fire in crosby died Cro the i mean it, it it was it was the um I don't know if it was Josh Yoey or Rob Rossi. Um, no, Rob Rossi's Minnesota. But anyway, uh, it was basically asking, like, uh, they asked Sydney, like, hey, how do you feel? Like, what do you think that kind of message that sends <laughs> to this team about Jake getting traded? And Sydney just says, I don't know. You'll have to ask them. Yeah. And it was the most dejected I've heard Sydney cross. 100%. The, the, when I look at it, at the Pittsburgh Penguins in a team-building perspective, <coughs> um, so Fenway Sports obviously has come down to Kyle Dubas and said, hey, can you try and be competitive but also maybe look towards the future when these players aren't here? Whatever. I think their expectation was that the bottom wasn't going to fall out the way it has. Yep. They've gotten to a point now where, you know, and I think we get we get to this point a lot, and we all do in our, in our lives where we realize that for whatever, if it's – you know, unfortunately, if it's like our parents, if it's um, certain things that we're dealing with that time necessarily isn't like on our side. Yeah. You know, there's less time than you had. And so with the Pittsburgh Penguins, there's no, hey, let's look at next year and retool and kind of look at this in a different perspective. This is 
it's not going to get better. It's actually only going to get worse. And the longer you wait, like Evgeny Malkin, it's it's it, it he's not Evgeny Malkin anymore. No. Uh, Chris Letang again, great defenseman, but I, I think Peak Letang coming back from his health issues and everything. Um, I, I don't think Peak Letang. Sydney having a great season, thirty thirty, you know, flirting with that stuff. Um, and here you have a team that has also traded for Eric Carlson, which I, made no sense which, at all. Made no sense. I'm like, well, what instead of Eric Carlson, why don't you just like go and go? <laughs> I don't know. I'll just go get Tony D'Angelo or whatever. You want an offensive guy? Like, what? what how does like Chris Letang runs PP one? He it, can r- r- run PP one. Like, what do you need anyway? It didn't work it, in it, San it, Jose, it, and yeah. now you're thinking it's, it's come on going to work even yeah. better in sh- in Pittsburgh. Yeah. So now I'm really curious in that. So he makes this Gensel trade again for the, you know, a second rounder and a bunch of uh, a bunch of like. You know, I think if again not to bring up Chris Faber again, but um, to you know Faber, watch it. A fam- it's a family show. It's, it's a. It's <laughs> Jeez- <laughs> All right, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, <laughs> 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 uh, if you know, you know. Um, you know, I I'm sure like th- there's there's a few prospects there that are currently playing overseas that probably you know they're pretty impressive and they're pretty okay um, but there's not one blue chip guy there and even if it's a blue chip guy you guys are you know is this next year is this two <laughs> years from now like you with six months they got a long way to go it's baby. a long way to go and so um yeah with pittsburgh and uh, you know I, I just feel like you know it's really interesting i i just finished a video game and where um, it's called EA Sports NHL no, 24. Yes, it's called EA Sports Final Fantasy 7. <laughs> um, and in the game, one thing that that happens that f- has frustrated me a little bit, and I and I won't uh, spoil it for anyone that I know we have some weebs in the chat. Um, there's times when an organization or a company, if it's narrative, if it's sports, if it's something in where you have to make a key decision for a product and its fan base. Mm-hmm. You have to have the courage to rip the bandit. And if you try to please everyone, the product is going to suffer. Yeah. And this is one of those key things with the Pittsburgh Penguins where I think even Penguins fans are getting to a point now where they're saying, you know what? I just don't like Evgeny Malkin. Yeah, thanks for the memories. Thank you for the cups, and we'll see you when we ha- we retire seventy one in the rafters. Yeah, we we know but, like there's no we, ill will. There's no ill will. Can we just move on though? Yeah, like the relationship. Like we, you know, this is not a team with Solani situation where Evgeny Malkin's going to show up next year and he's like, I got no, I got no knees. <laughs> Pittsburgh, oh, thank you, Joe Biden. <laughs> thank you for the new knees. I'm a new Malkin. It's not like, what are you, you know, I just don't think that's that's the thing that's going to happen. And, so. and I would yeah. love to see Sid on a new team. And I would love to see, yeah, I would love to see him. He's in that sick role. Like, I don't want to come. The, the first person that got, came to mind was, yeah. was Tom Brady, like where it's like the Patriots are yeah. like, we got to move. We got to figure some shit out. Yeah. And you, you still want to go. So you go to another team, you win a Super Bowl, you almost win another one. Yeah. But like, yeah, you both were right. Th- that's what needs to happen here. As much as I want to see him go to Colorado, they terrify me. The, <laughs> Boston. The te- yeah, <laughs> I, 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 to Boston. Boston, Toronto. You know the 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 teams rumored. So one guy thought of it is like Vancouver for these for the connections. Colorado, obviously. Boston, obviously, and then somebody said Toronto, but like, yeah, everyone's gonna say Toronto. But like, I want to see he's getting older. He still looks great, but like, I want to see grizzled vet Sid just be like, I'll show you guys how to win a Stanley Cup. Yeah, for sure. 